Hey everybody, good morning, Rob Moffitt. Guys, this morning we're going to have a video on sleep for this week's video. I've managed to increase the amount of sleep I get every night from years of only having four and a half to six hours to where now I have between seven and eight hours. I average about seven and a half every night. If I get less than seven, I know there's a problem. Now, I've been able to do this by using different methods I've learned over the internet and reading that are basically natural methods and uh, maybe they might help you. Let's get started. The, uh, the first thing that I did that is one of the best things you could do is to black out your room. If your bedroom windows have any light coming from the outside, I had some blackout curtains but they weren't really that good. They were kind of old and they didn't fit too well and I was still getting light. What I did is I put some cardboard in the windows. I put some little wood blocks. I glued them on top so I could slide them in and wedge them in. Uh, two pieces of cardboard. People threw out uh, some cardboard boxes from some large screen TVs and it was easy to cut the cardboard to f uh, fit the windows and made the room completely black. Not completely but it, it's like an oasis with, with uh, the big change between uh, what it was before. We used to have some bright lights on the outside at night and the curtains didn't do a very good job. But also by doing this I was able to reduce the amount of money I spend on electrical uh, bills because of the air conditioning is less. The heat doesn't come in so much during the day because I don't bother to take the cardboard down during the day. It's just one window. The rest of the windows are fine in the house. The other thing is I got an electrical slip, uh, strip because I have a lot of uh, electrical equipment in the bedroom which I shouldn't have and that way I can turn them all off and I don't have any blue light. The blue light is bad for you. It helps destroy your production of melatonin at night and you need the melatonin to get good deep correct sleep. Then another thing is I did is I got a sleep mask. The first one I got was very inexpensive and it was just a piece of cloth and it was rubbing on my eyes and there was pressure on it and it was uncomfortable. I got another one, just a few more dollars, and there's a curvature on both over both of the eyes. It looks like a miniature bra <laughs> you're wearing on your on your forehead there. But it works fine. You can open up your eyes and your eyelids don't interfere with the cloth. And it does a very good job. The one I have, I had two of them. I would getting a little bit of light underneath the, the nose. But the last one I got, I'll leave a link to it in the video description. I don't get any light underneath the nose. And it really helps. If you ever go to the hospital, it's a good thing to have because you can help yourself sleep better at the hospital. Another thing I did is I made sure the room is cold. You don't want a warm or hot room. If it fits in between 50, 60 or low 70s, it's much better for sleep. The, a lot of people, myself included, spend a lot of time on the internet, on the computers, and digital devices that emit uh, ultraviolet light in a blue wavelength that is not good for your sleep. Nighttime when you're getting ready to go to bed, you shouldn't be on digital devices that are emitting blue light for at least half an hour before you go to bed. And if you do, try to wear some glasses that will filter out the UV light. I can leave a link for those too. I've worn them, but actually I got better results I think with some of the other things I'm going to be mentioning and I've already mentioned. Another thing is exercise. <laughs> now. I found the best exercise to get really relaxing sleep is swimming. I used to live where there was a, a big swimming pool right by the bay. And once I taught myself how to swim, I would come home from work and get in the pool and swim for 20 minutes, then go have dinner, and then I'd be tired, but it was a good tired. And I'd go to bed, and not only would I sleep well, when I woke up, I felt good. Sometimes I sleep long, but I still don't feel as, as good as I should but I got the best sleep and felt the most relaxed and and comfortable after waking up from swimming at home before I went to bed in the evening not right before the bed but but like say right uh, right after dinner but 
uh, trampolines. I have a mini trampoline, and it's also very relaxing. It helps. It, it's not so hard on the joints. Um, you can get them for like thirty dollars. Don't eat a lot of food before you go to bed, and also don't eat after six. Try not to eat within at least two hours of going to sleep. If your body is having to do a lot of digestion, it's not going to sleep as well. Also, it's bad for acid reflux to have a lot of food in your system when you lay down. Um, so I don't eat after six, and I try to have small meals in the evening. Now, another thing is, is prayer and forgiveness. If you have a problem with sleeping, you may have issues with family or friends or neighbors or co-workers or whatever and there may be things going on in your life that exercise is not going to help pillows is not going to help it's going to be like a drip 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 in the back of your mind all the time it's always going to be like a radio station on it never goes away if you can just learn and find a way to have peace in your your family life and your social and work life it, it really helps now if you're not a religious person you can also help to yourself find forgiveness and how, forgive yourself too and spend some time in nature where you're, you're close to things that are larger than yourself and put yourself in perspective go by the ocean it makes you feel uh you, you feel where you are in the place of in the grand scheme of things by something huge and eternal like the ocean just be uh, spend some time with 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 your spiritual side try to try to come to terms with things that are bothering you and and let them go if you can if not just move <laughs> the america was founded by people who couldn't take it anymore and came to this country from from europe so you know just just do what you can to solve those problems in your life and sometimes prayer helps now rituals are good i try to brush my teeth not try I always brush my teeth right before I go to bed and it's a signal to my brain that it's time to go to bed I start shutting things down and turning off things and it's just a way to let my body know that that it's time to go to bed time to go to sleep it's good to have rituals you do the same thing all the time every time right before you go to bed and go to sleep here's another thing before you go to bed this helps in many ways, but for your sleep, it helps by putting down on paper the things you're going to do tomorrow. That way, at night, you don't have to think about them. When you're trying to go to sleep, you're no longer thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow because you've already assigned, uh, uh, you've prioritized them, you've scheduled them, uh, you know when you're going to do, how you're going to do them. So your, 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 your plan of action is done. You can, you can focus on just getting some healthy relaxing sleep also one of the best things you can do to be um, efficient in your life is to plan out what you're going to do tomorrow <laughs> taking naps it's good to take naps but you don't want to take them late in the day and you don't want to take them for long periods of time because it's going to interfere with your sleep at night now <laughs> if you have pets like I had my dog died in March, but I found it was impossible to keep the dog out of the bedroom. If I'd leave her outside, she'd scratch on the door all night and keep me up. And I didn't have the heart to keep her out of the room. But the problem was, by having her sleeping in the bedroom, she had a little bed by the wall. And it was noisy sometimes. She'd be making noise, or she'd be scratching or snoring or doing things, and she would wake me up. And it was not good um, if you have a pet if you have better luck than I did and making them sleep in another part of the house it would be better for you <laughs> sometimes you don't have a pet that's making noise you have a significant other and if they snore you're going to have a difficult situation because they're going to interfere with your sleep you can see if they will look into finding ways to stop their snoring uh, they can elevate the bed there's there's all sorts of things you can do for snoring you may have to just get separate beds single beds where the uh, 
they're not interfering with your sleep because you want to make sleep an important part of your life because it's so important for your health so this is going to be the most difficult <laughs> the difficult thing to solve but it's something you have to be proactive and work on another thing is just to get the right bed mattress and pillows i still don't have good pillows but i purchased this bed for a long time i had a bed that actually a spring one there was a spring that was coming through the cloth and i would sleep over here but that would roll over on it and i could afford a new mattress i could afford 10 new mattress but i didn't want to have to go somewhere and put it on top of the car or have it ordered and wait for them to deliver it and uh, i actually had some difficult experiences looking for them i finally went online they they sent this one to me in a big box it comes out and it folds out and it, it, uh, it gets larger I made a video of it if this thing cost me $229 I'm still using it five or six years later it's very comfortable and I get much better sleep sleeping on a bed that doesn't have a freaking spring poking me in the back or in other parts that are just uh, causing me to wake up from pain you know you don't don't you spend so many hours a night 365 days a year on it just spend a few bucks and get yourself a bed and a mattress and a uh, pillow that is comfortable um, I'll leave a link to this one it was pretty good deal I think another thing is if you're in pain you're not going to sleep too well now I don't like to take medicine for pain and then pain pills but uh, but sometimes you have to but if you have chronic long-lasting pain you can look into different natural ways of getting rid of pain like different pressure points and different things. I found out the pressure points actually work one time I was on a trip and I didn't have access to any pain medication and I was an old girlfriend taught me this where you could if, if Marsha is watching this thank you Marsha <laughs> you could pressure point right there on the skin fold right between your thumb and, and your finger here and you, you squeeze as hard as you can if you do this long enough it can reduce pain I was having uh, pain in my jaw my teeth it helped also with back pain but there's a, th this is a subject you can look up and find more about and there's other natural ways to do pain modification without having to take heavy-duty pain pills pain pills are a miracle I mean the ability to to get rid of pain is a miracle of modern medicine but people are abusing them now we have 70,000 people that die every year in America from opioid addiction try to find natural ways to get rid of your pain and not have pain when you go to bed and that's one of the things you can do to have better and longer sleep <sighs> I told you earlier I don't eat after 6 but if you are like fasting or something or if for some reason you didn't eat a lot during the day if you go to bed and you're hungry <laughs> your hunger pains <laughs> pangs are going to wake you up so you want to make sure you <laughs> you're not too hungry when you go to bed that's usually not a problem um, self hypnosis I've actually tried it and it does work you can make tapes of self hypnosis for specific areas you want to improve on and by listening to them before you go to bed they do work uh, you can look up online and find ways to make your own self hypnosis at tapes I think I'm going to do a video on this it's a pretty interesting subject and it's something that's effective it's obviously cheap and it works very well for a lot of things not just sleep this is a radio I bought a while back I think it was less than 20 bucks the cool thing about it is that it has a snooze function where you can play a recording and set how many minutes you want to play before it will turn off and I've been using this to play a song or not a song it's ambient music it's just music without vocal and I play it for 40 minutes every night and it helps me go to sleep and then it turns off after 40 minutes otherwise it goes to another song and I'm listening to um, some <laughs> some rock and roll in the middle of the night and it wakes me up but it's a very inexpensive uh, gadget I've been using it a lot it also plays I've got over a thousand mp3s on it that I've been able to uh, record from different sources 
the shortwave doesn't work that good though. Next is yoga. This is something I've never really tried except for just a few bro brief times and I can't say whether it works or not but many people say it does. So it's something to to look into. Um, there's also, there's tons and tons of videos on YouTube if you're interested in, in getting started in yoga. All you require is a mat. You can get those for like 20 bucks. The fan is cool because it puts out a white noise. You can get these for under $20. The electricity that it uses is probably like a dollar or two a month. What I do is I leave it on all night long and I put a air filter on the back tape. So not only is it cooling me by putting breeze blowing on me on the bed, I'm getting a white noise and then I'm also filtering the air in the bedroom. So it's a handy tool to help introduce a background noise that will help you go to sleep. The recorder is good if you have sleep apnea. I shouldn't say you. If, if I have sleep apnea, if I want to find out, um, what I would do is turn on my recorder. This particular recorder, it only records when there's sound. You, or there's, there's a function you can turn on to where it will only record when there's sound. You can also have it function where it record all the time where there's sound or not. But but I like to leave it on at night and then if I'm sleeping, it, this will tell me if I'm snoring or if I'm having trouble breathing and so on. So if you're not sleeping with a partner, you don't know if you have sleep issues with uh, snoring or not breathing or, or gagging or, or uh, things that would make you want to go to a doctor and have them test you for sleep apnea. It's a very inexpensive device. You can get them for like 20 or $30. I'll leave a link. Um, they're excellent tools. They come in handy for a lot of different things. Now, if you don't know much about sleep apnea, basically this is what it is. When you breathe, your air comes in through your nose or your mouth. Here's where it comes through your nose. Here's where it comes through your mouth. Here's your tongue. And this is the top of your mouth, your palate. When you lay in bed, your jaw opens up and then your tongue depresses, falls back, and blocks the airway so the air can go. That's where a lot of the noise comes from. People are snoring. You can get little gadgets that will close your mouth so you will only breathe through your nose. And also a lot of people find that it's helpful to raise their bed or pillow. That way they don't have their tongue falling back. If you do have sleep apnea and you can't get satisfaction from many methods that are out there you may have to end up going to a doctor and getting approval for a little sleep sleep, a sleep apnea machine where it will during the night press air in through your mouth and nose and you will breathe uh, normally during the night it's not a comfortable thing but the people that it does help it's a lifesaver it enables them to have uh, sleep during the night and they're not feeling like a zombie during the day. It gives them their life back. So a lot of people don't like those machines, but for the people that it works, it's a lifesaver. But I think I would try different things first. Like I said, uh, don't eat late, uh, sleep with your head and pillow elevated. Uh, you can try those little masks that hold your mouth shut and so on, different things. You could try before you, you use a machine or before I would use the machine. I'm not telling you to do anything. Uh, you should always consult a doctor uh, with any medical advice. And uh, I'm just telling you what I've been, I've been doing and what's been working for me. This is my secret weapon. This is a book written by Barbara Ann Kip for Kipfner. I'll leave a link to her book. You can get these used now for Amazon for like a dollar, two two ninety nine shipping. That total is four bucks. You can get it in the library for free. What Miss Kipfner did is she wrote some years ago a book on 14,000 things to be happy about. Every page, small page, is crammed one line after another. Things that made her happy over the years. All of these will not be things that make you happy, but you will be reminded of things that you forgot about years ago. And by looking at them one at a time, like, like a snapshot or a slideshow or a PowerPoint, uh, the, when you just read one line at a time and you get a visual image 
of what that happy thing is and move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Before you go to bed, read five or ten pages. This will reprogram your mind. You are what you think about every single day. If before you go to bed at night, instead of thinking about what's bothering you, what's going to bother you tomorrow, what you're worrying about, if you just start thinking about one happy thing after another and you visualize it, you can hear it, you can smell it, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it, you remember it, one after another, after another, after another, page after page after page after page. This will reprogram your mind before you go to bed. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I, I actually did a, a video book review of the book on my YouTube channel. <laughs> and after a few years went by, Miss Kipfner found out about it and, and watched my my video review and she left me a message. She said that it brought tears to her eyes. I'm hoping that it was tears of happiness. <laughs> but this is a secret, secret weapon. If you're having trouble going to sleep, a lot of people recommend you read something before you go to bed. It will calm your mind. This is something to read. Put you in a happy frame of mind before you go to bed. I, I, th I think it's, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's my secret weapon. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Your bedroom should be a place to sleep. It shouldn't be a place where you have four computers or a giant TV or radios or hobbies or this or that. It should be an oasis, a place to relax and go to sleep. And I'm telling you what it should be. This is <laughs> right now I'm in my bedroom and I'm on my computer. <laughs> but it should be without a computer or anything else. Um, if you can, make your bedroom into an oasis just for sleep. That will help. That way when you go in there, it's just for one thing or almost one thing. <laughs> Here's something else that will help you sleep. If, before you go to bed, it's uh, almost guaranteed help you have a better, more comfortable, relaxing sleep. Whether or not you can do it seven days a week, <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> Kerbal teas. I've tried them. Actually, they do work. Um, they're rather inexpensive. I can't recommend one over another, but you can go online and see which ones that you think are the best for you and get the reviews. A hot bath is works like a son of a gun. I like to add uh, magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salt, to mine. The magnesium, I think, helps the sleep too. But take yourself a hot bath, just relax in it, and right, right, be smack dad before you go to bed. You've brushed your teeth, you've done everything. Just dry off, get into bed, turn on the covers. The fan's blowing, nice cool breeze. You got your music playing, that's going to go off in 40 minutes. Maybe you could read the happy book for for 20 minutes, and just. Relax. You've already written down everything you're going to do tomorrow. You don't have any worries. You said your prayers. Everything. You need. You, have, you don't have a big meal. You're not digesting a ton of food. You know, it's just all the lights blocked out of your window. So you're just in a dark, cool, calm cave with pleasant music. And you're drifting off to a sleep. You just came out of a warm, hot bath. Yeah, it's a good, good night. <laughs> Deep breathing. Deep breathing surprisingly works pretty good in relaxing the body. Wiki has a really good article on how to do deep breathing, but there's a lot of articles online you can find out more about it. It's an ancient practice. Almost every ancient uh, religion uh, or, or uh, different uh, rituals people have all over the world talk about breathing rituals because they seem to work. Meditation. Meditation is something so many people tell me work. I have tried it a couple times and I just don't seem to be doing it right. But it's something I'm going to try again in the future. But for those people who do use it and it works for them, it's very good for your sleep. Melatonin. I started taking melatonin to help with uh, acid reflux. I read a study where three milligrams per night, along with some supplements, were as good as uh, the uh, the pills that more, most, most people take for uh, acid reflux, the uh, ACE inhibitors, the omeprazole. 
I took it and it was helpful for my acid reflux. Although I found the best thing for acid reflux was just not to eat a lot or lay down after eating and have elevated bed. But what I do is I buy a large bottle of these, 150 tablets, and I split them in half. So at nighttime, I take two and a half milligrams. This bottle lasts me close to a year. And it's very helpful. I take two and a half milligrams. They taste good. And I, I've tried other brands that didn't have the little uh, ah, strawberry flavor. I have no idea why one would work better without the strawberry. But for some reason, this one with the strawberry flavor worked better. You don't have to swallow it. You can put it in your mouth and it dissolves. And I'll leave a link to a book by a doctor that wrote a uh, book on melatonin that changed my mind. I don't normally like to take pills for anything. But this is probably, the, beside a baby aspirin, this is the only pill I take. And I have no qualm about taking it. And I worry about taking everything. This is one of the most important things, is attitude. To, to decide that you're going to find a way to solve your sleep problem and to take action. Um, not just think about it, read about it, or listen to this video, but to every day try something different, try something new to where you can be proactive and start working on your problem of not sleeping or having better sleep. Take action and have the attitude that you're not going to give up. You're not just going to take a really strong pill from the doctor. You're going to try things that are natural that you can use and do yourself and work on your problem of having better sleep. Attitude and action. Guys, I think that's about all. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Something that's helpful to you. I put on new videos every week. Been doing it for about 12 years. Got a lot of cool people on my channel I feature. You want to check them out. And uh, I've been getting a lot of my videos that have been demonetized. So I don't make much money anymore. If you guys want to help me out, I'll be leaving a link to some of the things I mentioned in the, in the video that I use personally that I think work. And if you use the links to go to Amazon, even if you don't purchase that individual item, if you should buy some other item, if you buy an island or a jet aircraft, <laughs> Amazon will throw me a few bucks or a few pennies. It helps out, guys. I appreciate it very much. And uh, don't forget, you got to take action. you got to have the right attitude and work on this, and you can do it. I went from, like I said, four and a half hours to six on a good night to where now. It's about to seven, eight. I usually seven and a half. If I have less than seven, I know there's a problem, and I find out what it is. So, guys, hope this is something that was handy for you. I put on new stuff every week. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I try to answer all the questions I can. I read all my comments. All right, guys, take care. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Don't let the bed bugs bite.